Okay, here we are back again. We're gonna we're gonna put this bag together, but I want to show you a few things first. I cleaned all the rust off of the click, and if you notice, that's that little wire right there in the dead center of your screen. That is the click spring. Um, it's a little different than the ones that are located underneath the click that we've seen on other movements. So I'm going to take this wheel off, show you what that exactly is and uh, so you know what to expect when you take one of these apart or if you get in this deep let's focus it first there we go I had already loosened that that's why it appeared to be loose because it was okay there's our ratchet wheel and there's the click spring a little different than what we're used to uh, if you go to touch that it's gonna come springing out of there pretty good so um, unless you want that out of there you're gonna put a, a finger on it a pair of tweezers you're gonna hold on to that somehow to keep that from flying out so there's our click spring and it is functioning the only rust that I noticed was on the click and and the boss that it bolts to so we're going to put that ratchet wheel back on okay i did notice i took the winding stem out and it had a little had a little tightness to it it was um uh some resistance and i took it out and it had some some rust and some uh, dirt on it so that's probably where the water came in that got into this click okay we're gonna focus that the click I cleaned and soaked with uh, WD-40 of all things because that is a rust penetrant or you could use any rust penetrator like PB blaster uh, anything that's designed to attack rust I'm going to put a smear of grease on that right there doesn't take much and drop our click in place there's a little discoloration on the click still not unusual but we've at least cleaned off the major part of the rust and <coughs> uh, have it working smoothly now. Let's put a smear of grease across that. And the back side of the screw had a little rust, so I had that soaking also. And when we come back on, our click should operate normally. A quick, easy repair on something that most people would think is uh, a big repair or catastrophic I don't know you know if it doesn't wind there might be a problem so let's get a few look at that this thing can wind up now there's that click in operation it's nice and free it's lubricated our balance is swinging quite nice that's a good sign too uh, I'm not going to do a full service on this because I don't think it needs it. It's too new. It just had a little water contamination causing that to uh, rust up the way it did. Now, we're going to let that spring down again. Okay. There we go. We let that spring down, the main spring. The balance will come to a rest. Uh, a couple of things to note. I'm going to install the chrono bridge. Um, these are a little sloppy because they're not sitting in a jewel that is spring loaded. And we have this spring here for the levers. We're not going to touch that um, because if we touch them now, they're going to come flying out. So let's not do that. Here's our chrono bridge uh, with that chrono wheel attached to the other side and it's jeweled both sides you can see how that is 
So we're going to slip that chrono wheel underneath right in here because it's going to go underneath that. Not a hard operation. It's not that difficult. Um, don't be intimidated by this chrono mechanism. It's rather simple if you ask me. Um, painfully simple actually. You just give it a tap and a nudge and these are pinned so when those pins fall in and everything's in place it uh, it's good to go. Simple as that. Okay, we're gonna drop a screw in that chrono bridge. I don't know what a watchmaker would charge you to do this amount of work to fix a click on a chrono. Um, can't imagine it being cheap if they have to get into it, dig into it, take parts out clean it and if they're used to working on high-end pieces they're not going to give you a break because yours is not a so-called high-end piece although I think it is just because it's not made in Switzerland big deal so what uh, um, something you can do yourself hopefully this will help now we're gonna put those levers in next and it might be a bit of a challenge, might not be, with the springs on those pushers. So, the first thing we're going to do, let's take that out of the shot. This assembly here, that spring has to be set. Let's get a picture, focus on that picture. That's how it looks like now, without it being properly set and I'm going to uh, set that lever and spring assembly so that it's um, the way it should be in the syst in the movement okay there you have it that little gap let's get the get the tweezers this gap right here right in here this little gap is going to be filled in right here that's going to go into that that opening so it's all captured so I put that down and it snapped out of place so I'm going to just do this real quick is this the proper way to do it I don't know but it's working for me so why not? Okay. I just lay it in, push it forward. Okay, so this mechanism here is engaged in that slot the way it should be with that spring right there in its proper place. All we need to do now is seat that lever onto its boss, but it's spring loaded from the back side right there. So I'm going to, I'm just going to lean on it with my tweezers. Actually, let's do this. Let's take another set of tweezers. Make sure this is coming over. There we go. You heard it snap in. Everything stayed in place. That's a good sign. Is that the proper way to do this? I don't know. Most people would probably say, uh, well, that's pressed in there, so that's not coming out. I don't know. But it works. If it works, so what? Let it work. All right, we got a screw. if I can get it to stand up in there okay come on there we go screw is standing up it is 
left-handed so we are going to loosen it to drive it home okay now when I push on that button everything's working fine okay that's a good sign now let's put in this lever right over here and we're just basically backing up the order of the way we did things and again we're going to do this the same way <clears throat> we're going to push that down to get the the lever in between that button and the spring and push it on simple at least I thought it was simple um, if you have a way of doing it or if you've done this and have a simpler way of doing it by all means share it with somebody or let me know or do what you want I'm certainly no expert come on lay in there let's see how that goes and this is also a left-handed thread so we are turning to the left to tighten it I'm really working with this camera tight to the to the movement so you can see exactly what I'm doing here so give that button a push and you can see the mechanism working in conjunction with the other one now the last thing we're going to, well not the last thing, the next thing is the lever that's going on here that's like the reset lever that's going to reset everything and we're going to have to move this a little bit I'm sure and probably move that a little bit to get everything seated in here and we have a spring up here so uh, we're just going to wing this I'm just going to lay it in there okay Now, I can't push that down because we have this in the way and we have this in the way. So what I'm going to do, come around, it's sitting on its pivot right here so we don't have to worry about that too much. I'm going to hold on to it with my finger, just general pressure. I think this is the first one that's going to come and then we have one over here get that out of the way push that out of the way push that out of the way the spring pressure takes over and everything is seated simple I thought it was you're not going to lean on it you're not going to put pressure on it just gentle gentle pressure you don't want to kill it you just going to feel as you go when a spring or a piece gets moved in you'll feel it snap I didn't put any lubrication on that does it need it? probably but we're not doing a service there should be lubrication on it from the factory now the last thing we're going to do we're not going to reset this because these two gears are just hanging out in the open without support I don't want to put pressure on that so we are going to set this I'm going to call this the chrono wheel bridge I don't know what you call it you're lining up two dowel pins on the bridge itself and two jewels on those shafts and if you look closely you can see the shaft is through the jewel the bridge is sitting flat with no gaps down at the base so I'm confident 
everything is set up and we're going to put in our screw and drive it home it's loose at first I'm not killing it I hit my reset lever and there it is everything is reset and I'm going to tighten that up tight okay now if everything was all your levers were set to zero before you started when you're done they should all set to zero okay that's right where that one was when we started there's your chrono hand that's right at zero okay so that's a good sign everything reset to zero the way it should now let's give this a wind Our click is working. It is winding up. We're going to give this a full wind because we're going to put it on a time grapher. See how it's doing. These things take a lot of winds. This thing will run for 60 hours plus. Still winding. Plus it's working that lubrication into the click getting it all around that's a good thing there you go resistance felt that's when we stop now we're gonna set this to run if I can get it to focus and you'll see how that mechanism works There's that center wheel turning. Our little hammers came up. The reset hammers, I call them. Are they really hammers? I don't know. But let's turn it over. And there it is. The chrono hand ticking away. This is a pretty nice reproduction. I do like it. It's cool looking. I do like my Soviet ones better because they're original but this is still pretty cool and the price I got it for I couldn't pass it up so if we come back around we're gonna stop that mechanism there it is it stopped and then our reset levers come home and reset everything turn it over back to zero and back to zero so there you have it a full video on how to uh, diagnose and fix a click on a 3133 um, pretty soon we'll be getting into a full service on one of these uh, I just wanted to get into this and make it into something that was pretty pretty good somebody could learn from and not be too intimidated by so there you go look forward to the next one